Hello, welcome to a quick check of the draft pilot's pocket checklist that I'm working on for the Hoggett Dev Community A4E Charlie. Uh, by way of introduction, my name is Disco. Uh, I'm the commander of VMA 131 Diamondbacks in Virtual Carrier Strike Group 1. Uh, we've just recently adopted the scooter here as our platform. Uh, really very much enjoying the scooter so far and wanted to give back to the community a little bit. So we'll talk about uh, this checklist that uh, we're working on, how it's used, a couple different versions, and uh, where it might be useful. So let's jump into the cockpit. F1. Alright, so here we are in the cockpit of our suitably personalized A4E Charlie. And uh, looking around the cockpit, we don't have a checklist, so let's call up Kneeboard. So here on the Kneeboard, uh, this is a standard uh, pre-flight brief card that we use uh, in VMA-131. Start off with the time hack here, mission objectives, talk about the weather, sequences and standards, what the call sign will be, line up, whether there's other aircraft or dissimilar aircraft in the flight. Uh, Pre-flight, so uh, fuel or ordnance, uh, start, takeoff, and uh, control times if important. Frequencies, so our standard tactical frequency, tower, uh, JTAC if we're on a ground mission. Mission sequence overview, obviously start, taxi, takeoff, what we'll do in the AO, and then how we plan to recover, uh, and then any landing or alternates. We'll discuss a hard deck uh, or an altitude block for the flight and uh, when we expect to make fuel checks and what the uh, value will be for Bingo and Joker. Contingencies in a sim, not typically a big deal, um, although you may have uh, some in-flight emergencies, mid-air collision, um, need to do a battle damage assessment, landing emergencies, and then a little more specific on the execution uh, over here in step six. So that'll be a very uh, specific breakdown of what we're going to do. And then a uh, quick wrap-up uh, in terms of what major objections are, objectives are, radio discipline, flight control checks, things like that. Moving on. Uh, this is our in-work uh, standard operating procedures for 131. Talks about how we want to do the engine start, use of the lights to indicate when you're ready to taxi, uh, take off an initial climb. Uh, in most cases, you'll see perform in accordance with the NATOPS flight manual or pilot's pocket checklist. Um, just some general concepts here that uh, we're working out uh, in the 131. Moving on to the actual pilot's pocket checklist. So I used to write these for a living uh, about 20 years ago, so this has been kind of fun for me to uh, take a skill set that I used to have uh, and use on a regular basis and bring it hopefully into DCS and uh, hopefully you guys will find some use for it. So this is a work in process cover. This will change based on what we ultimately put into the emergency procedures largely, uh, and then also performance data. So we have a couple of bingo charts here. Uh, this first one is for a low drag index. Uh, gives you, uh, you start off with whatever your remaining fuel is and at different altitudes, and it tells you if you climb up to uh, uh, your optimum altitude, which will be anywhere from uh, 13 to 30,000 feet uh, on this chart, how long you can last, either in terms of minutes uh, or uh, miles. Second one is for a higher drag index. These are both borrowed from the TA4 uh, pilot's pocket checklist, which has the correct engine in it and is closer uh, to uh, what we've got than some of the other reference materials I've been able to find so far. Quick look at the uh, precautionary uh, and flame-out approach. This is a uh, simple overview. Um, this is just general precautionary approach, kind of high key. Uh, and then coming in, you have uh, various checkpoints and what you want to be in terms of distance from uh, your touchdown point and altitudes also borrowed, borrowed from the uh, TA-4. So actual procedures, um, what we'll do here is uh, start going through here. So interior lights or flashlight is required. We don't need the flashlight yet, so we'll pull up the in interior lights. Um, guns and master are safe, we'll make sure. So, gun safe. 
Master switch is off. All right. All of the switches normally are in their off position here. So for engine start, we want to make sure that the anti-collision light is off. It is. Fuse large lights. We're going to set to uh, I'm going to set those to dim. Exterior lights mode switch. Uh, that determines whether they're steady or flashing. We use flashing to indicate we're not ready to move. So we start in the flashing condition there. Wing and tail, we're going to go to bright or dim, so we'll go dim and dim. Master exterior light switch on the throttle, it's the little pinky switch. We uh, give it a switch that now will turn our lights on. And we technically don't have power on the airplane yet, so they're obviously not lit. So now we're going to request external power. F8. F2, F1. Chief, turn on the ground power. Now, when the chief turns Copy. on the ground power, you'll see a couple of gauges come to life. Ground power is now on. And if we look outside, the lights are on and they're flashing. F2. And let's get back in the cockpit. F1. All right, so we're going to take a quick look around the area, make sure that the airplane is, uh, we've got a fire guard, we're okay for start. So we're going to take the uh, start switch here and we're going to push it down. We're watching the RPMs at 5%. We're going to left click once, that gives us the first D10 on the throttle. Next thing we're looking for is 17%. We'll do another left click on the throttle. and kneeboard. Normally we'd be watching for temperatures to come up as well as speed and pressure here. We also want to be ready to ask the chief to uh, remove power, so F8, F2, F2. Chief, turn off the ground power. Copy. And there we go, good light off. Kneeboard. Ground power is now off. All right. So we're going to set the uh, nav waypoint selector switch, which is this guy here. Turn the floodlights on. He goes to standby. Magnetic variation we're going to set. Persian Gulf's 1.6 east. Now radar switch. This is going to go to test. Now we need to mark the time here. We are at, uh, looks like 50 after. So at 55, the uh, memory light should go out. So tack in, we're going to warm the tack in up. Put it in receive mode. Next. Radar mode select switch. We're going to go to standby. That lets the radar start to warm up. Now after 30 seconds we can turn the tack in on and we can also set our tack in frequency. I'm going to add this to the checklist later. We're going to track Aldafra which is our home field here where we're starting up. There's actually a fair amount of waiting. You see there, it just said warm up complete for uh, the APN, which uh, I believe is the radar here. So I like to close the radar filter plate and then our night vision to start working. go for the easy red lights at night. I really like the way those look. Set the gun slight to night and go ahead and put, turn that down a little bit. It 
So three minutes after warm-up, we can begin our radar, uh, our radar test. It's like about another minute or so. lovely Raquel Welch down there. She's wearing, actually wearing a bikini. It's not quite as risque as you think. Almost there. Now, while the debug mode is enabled, we'll actually see up here in the right, upper right hand corner, we'll see some of the status changes from the airplane. It's actually helpful for now. Right, and I think we're okay now for the radar. So, starting the three minute check, I'm gonna set the radar mode to search. Gain control, we're gonna go, uh, gain is the small one here, we're gonna go clockwise. So we've got targets, so if we come all the way out, you can see we still have targets. So we'll leave that there. So the range switch we want to check is short, and it is. It's this guy right here. Mode select switch, we're going to change to ter terrain clearance. We'll see that the flag here has changed to 10. And we're going to rotate the gain knob again until see what uh, and then the detail knob is the outer one all right so now you want to get more of the terrain clearance there. So now what we were supposed to do here is, and while we were doing that, the uh, memory light came out, so the INS is fully aligned now, and the radar's warmed, the navigation radar's warmed up. So while we're gonna watch that switch, we're gonna change the switch to long, and this terrain indication should move left and up. I think, however, it's backwards right now. It's down. So if you see, it's mostly just down, going to long range. All right. So now, because we don't want to cook anybody here at the base, keep it to where they can't have any kids, we're going to go to standby. We're going to check that the navigation radar memory light is off, which it is. So. What we expect now is that up here we're going to see a ground speed indication of 121 knots, which we do, and we're going to see zero to plus or minus two degrees of drift, and we're perfectly zero, so we're good there. So the nav radar switch can now go to standby. We'll flip pages here. All right, so before taxi, we want to make sure that the AFCS is on standby. We're going to set the flaps to half. That's a preference thing. I like setting the flaps prior to moving. Altimeter is set. Uh, 2992 is the in the brief. So BDHI source selector here. Now we have a choice between the uh, nav computer, which currently won't provide any information. Pack in, which we set earlier but have not turned on. So, one of the steps we're going to add here is uh, tack in setup. So, we'll go 
transmit receive, we'll see that we have a distance in the window and it is pointing, uh, the head is pointing to the uh, station which is behind us and to the right. So we're going to check the weapon selector panel is off. That's down, that's correct. Radar altimeter we're going to turn on, that's a left click. We don't have, I'm going to leave the height at 500 feet because that's fine. And I'm going to do our lights check. So push and hold. We've got all the warning lights are up, the indexer's good, major warning and caution lights, oil pressure low, fuel quantity, and LO2 change, so we're good. All right, we're going to set takeoff trim, which at this weight is going to be about a 7. All right. So, the exterior lights mode switch. Now, we're about ready to taxi, so we're going to switch from the flashing to steady. Lights are no longer flashing except for the beacon, which is correct. And we're going to go ahead and put that taxi light on. Taxi light is on. So, now one thing you'll notice, the sun's been going down. And uh, very clearly, that kneeboard is going to wash us out if we leave it like this. So we're currently on page three. I thought of that. So we have a night version in work. And we'll go back to page three. That's where we're at. So you'll see much less washout for us in terms of uh, the kneeboard itself. All right, so we are good to taxi. Um, we're going to go ahead and uh, hide the kneeboard. kneeboard. Using voice attack, by the way. All right, so we're ready to taxi. We'll go ahead and make radio call. Held off the ground, Rattler 00 is at the maintenance sheds with Charlie for one through left. Now they'd give us the taxi instructions and we would follow those but what we know it's going to be is coming around the corner here out of the sheds and then around the around the corner to One three left. F three. So, looking around the cockpit, the, again, the Hoggett Dev guys have done a remarkable job uh, putting this thing together. Uh, so much of it is actually functional that uh, it's just it's stunning. Um, you know, obviously, we're all hoping for some additional functionality that will improve. For example, our intention to use uh, this as part of a, a multi-airframe uh, strike group. So we have. AVABs that launch off the terra while we have Hornets uh, currently and now scooters starting on uh, this coming Monday will be launching off of the John C. Stennis. When the Tomcat drops it's going to join us on the Stennis and uh, once we get the newer smaller carriers uh, the scooter uh, will operate off the small carriers as well. Um, so clearly uh, the ability to pick up the TAC-N on uh, the boat will be very important. Um, but again, the, the general function, the, the level of functionality present in the mod as it exists is just truly impressive. Absolutely love it, and uh, thank you guys at Hoggett so much for putting this together. You did a really just a bang-up, bang-up job. So this checklist, as I said, is kind of my... Uh, attempt to give back a little bit to that same community that put that together. It's just a remarkable, remarkable module and uh, or mod and uh, I wanted to uh, give a little bit back to myself. So 
So we're going to come up to the whole short line here and uh, then we'll move on to the next step in the kneeboard. F3. All right, so we're at the whole short line. Knee board. All right, so before taxi, we completed the before taxi checklist with before takeoff. So canopy low, close and locked. Boom, canopy's down, all right. And for a nice change, the uh, clocks are in agreement. Sometimes the clocks don't agree. All right, so heading select knob, that's if we want to have it set. Um, let's go ahead and set that guy to uh, 130, which is our, uh, or actually 310. We're going to set that to 310. That's our outbound course because we're going to make a uh, nice sweeping left-hander when we come out of here. All right. So spoilers, we're going to arm the spoilers. Um, I have that on a HOTUS bind. And we can't see it from inside the cockpit, but if we go outside, F2. You'll see the spoilers have deployed. That's to keep us under control on the ground. F1. F1. All right, so APC switch, we're going to verify that that is indeed off. Now that's for the uh, automatic power compensation or controller, I think it is. That uh, will actually run the auto throttle for you when you uh, have the gear out and uh, it looks at what you have up here on the indexer and will run the throttle for you. Uh, trim, verify set, we are good. Navigation radar set to the appropriate, so we're over land right now, we'll set it to land. And with that, I believe a quick look around the cockpit, we are ready to go. So reviewing takeoff, we're going to pull out onto the runway, we're going to hold the brakes, we're going to set 90% power. Uh, need to work on this page brake, but uh, we'll verify engine pressure ratio is good, EGT is good, oil pressure and temperatures are within limits. Uh, we'll do a brake release, we'll push the stick full forward. Uh, we're going to hold that to about 120 knots, that uh, dampens down the bounciness on the runway. Uh, 130 knots, we're going to smoothly rotate the stick aft. Uh, once we're airborne, we'll select gear up at 50 feet on the radar altimeter. Uh, flaps will come up at 175 knots. We'll get the taxi light switch. Uh, we'll set power for 300 knots in our desired rate of climb. Uh, we'll trim as required to maintain that. Um, and we'll put the uh, radar mode switch here to search and the radar range switch as required. I'm going to go ahead and set that to long now because I know that's where I want it. And that's all we need. So, Eldarfer Tower, Rattler 00, holding short, 13 left, be a northwest departure. All right, so we'll pretend they've cleared us on the runway. Power's coming up. Now, I'm a believer that there's no such thing as uh, too much runway behind you, and the only time that you have too much fuel is when you're on fire. So I have a tendency to come as close to the end of the runway as I can, give myself all the room possible. We're single ships, so we're going to line up on the center. So there's the brakes are held, power's coming up to 90%. We can see that uh, temperature pressures are all responding correctly. Stable. Brake release. Stick full forward. Full power. Airspeed's alive. Center. All right, there's 120. We're going to smoothly rotate up. Which leaps off the ground. It's 50 feet. Gear's coming up. 175 knots. Flaps coming up. And start trimming those down a bit. 
flaps are up. Accelerating rapidly towards 300 knots. Let me get that taxi light. Get radar to search. Nose is still coming up. And we'll begin our turn to the left. We'll bring the power back to about 98%. Continue pulling for 300 knots. And another beautiful day in the Gulf. Let the nose fall through a little bit now. So it may not be an F-18, but uh, here in the, by the time we get to 180, degrees we're also going to be at about 10,000 feet and that's not terrible for a little bomb truck like the scooter. And there's 10,000 feet. Looking good. Center. All right, so we were gonna we have our course set to kind of take us out at 310 degrees. So we're gonna continue up. There's 310 roughly, so we'll wings level there. So one thing we can do is we can engage the AFCS, select heading select, now it's going to steer us, but it's going to maintain this pitch angle that we had. So here we are coming up on uh, feet wet. We are uh, seven miles. Now we can go to control wheel steering mode just by pushing the switch a little bit. And now it's basically just going to hold whatever we gave it. If we look over here, the altitude select is off, or the heading select is off, we can turn it back on, and it will again acquire that 310 heading. All right, we'd make a call here, except we're gonna go right back in. So uh, there's 20,000 feet, we're what, less than three minutes after brake release, 180 degrees. So very happy with that. All right, so we're going to go ahead and go to power idle now. We're going to use the control wheel steering mode in the AFCS. So it's basically just going to pick whatever we tell it to do when we release the stick. And that's the orientation it's going to maintain. Get the boards out. Knee board. So we looked through the, we skipped cruise here, but basically we'd want to check that the cabin pressure altitude gauge is responding and uh, use the uh, AFCS as desired. For descent, we're gonna set power as idle, external lights are on. Fuel state, we got a uh, little bit of gas. We're not as much as I would have thought, but uh, we did do a full power climb for a while there, and I don't think I had this set as a full fuel load. So, uh, once again, radar altimeter, we're gonna leave it with the warning at 500 feet. Guns are safe, masters off. So there's a little primer on the overhead and landing for a shore. We'll add one for a float later. Um, as I pointed out, the autopilot's flying the airplane right now in control wheel steering or CSS mode. And so it's basically just holding uh, the last uh, pitch and roll inputs that I gave it. There are some limits to it, but they're actually pretty good. So. Looking over the overhead real quick to brief that. Um, radar mode, we're going to go to standby or off. Um, we'll do that now. AFCS, we'll turn that off once we get uh, uh, down in for the overhead. And that's just so that uh, uh, HAL, the autopilot, doesn't surprise us with anything. We're going to want our airspeed at uh, 250 knots and our altitude will be 
uh, at 800 feet. So we're going to continue in a spiraling descent here uh, because we're going to land on 13 left, the uh, runway we just took off from. So good review there. Give you a sense of how good the night lighting is here in the uh, scooter. You can continue to turn it down to where your night vision is maintained uh, really quite well. Uh, once we have the ability to turn the red lights all the way off again, um, that's going to work out really pretty nicely as well. So I'll slow that uh, descent rate a little bit. We're watching the uh, BDHI here. The uh, head's pointing at the station. So if we look over there, there's the airport, there's the airfield, and uh, Pacan is at the airfield. center. So anytime the bank is between these two hash marks, the radar altimeter should be functional. That says off right now because we're just a little, still a little too high above the ground. Um, it will start indicating, I believe, at about 6, 000, 5 or 6,000 feet, 5,000 feet there. So another beautiful night in the Gulf. I will need to make a gamma adjustment here shortly because I'm running the uh, nighttime shaders mod. I get some artifacts uh, in VR that I don't like, so. And. All right, so we're gonna start putting a little bit of power in. Maintain that 250 knots. Coming through what's a little under 6,000 feet now. So the radar altimeter will start indicating shortly. All right, there's 5,000 feet and, or almost 5,000 feet. And I'll for traffic, Radler 00 is 10 to the north, inbound for overhead, 13 left. Right, radar altimeter is working. I don't know why we're getting the choppiness, maybe because of the recording. All right, so we'll let Iron Mike finish this turnout here, the autopilot. start rolling out. Now you do have to be a little forceful with control wheel steering so that it understands you wanted something specific. So if you watch it sometimes it's a little finicky which is why I say uh, during the descent here it's a good idea to uh, make sure that uh, you turn off the autopilot at a certain point. I usually do it about inbound where I would make the initial call. We're still a little high. We want to get down to 800 feet, so we're power idle. Boards are in. There's 2,000 feet, and we're four miles out, so. That choppiness on my system is very unusual. Rattler 00, zero initial, overhead 13 left. Escape. Oh, it is high. Okay. All right. So I already had that gamma adjustment in. 
All right, so we want to trim for 800 feet here, and uh, the pitch trim's a little wonky still in the scooter, but it's not bad. Power's coming up to keep us at uh, 250 knots. Let the nose come up slowly. It might be a uh, Oculus issue, actually. We'll see. All right. So coming up on the approach end here. All right, and zero zero is in the brake. So it's boards out. We're going to pull the power back, but only to about 70%. And this is a kind of a shallow level turn is the intention. Below 225, you can drop the gear. I wait till I'm about 90 through the turn. So a little longer, and there's the 90, gears coming down, flaps are coming down now. The boards remain out for landing, and we want to get some power in because we want to maintain about 150 on the downland. So if we're in a formation, we want to make sure that the guys behind us don't run us over. All right, there's our downwind course, 310. It ballooned a little bit, not too bad. Now we'll start working for the indexer. Once we get a little closer to the end of the runway. So we're still a little high, going to work down to 600 feet. That choppiness is really aggravating. Sorry about that. See, so this is a system that shouldn't be doing that. Okay, so there's the end of the runway. We're going to go out to the rabbit ears a little bit. So working our way down to 600 feet and 150-ish knots. All right, there we go. And there's the rabbit ears, so we begin our turn in. Now we start trimming and slowing down. Now we want to be at a, slowing down to about 135 knots. Came through 500 just a little early. I like to be closer to the 90 degree on our way in for that, but so we're trimming, try and get the uh, donut on the indexer there. There we go. And we want to continue coming down and continue at about 130 knots. And it's a little more power out. The choppiness is sure annoying. Sorry, guys. Ended up cutting that a little wide. So the indexer performance strikes me as off by a little bit, but uh, that's something we can live with. Forgot to hit the taxi switch. It's part of our part of our approach there. Mild overshoot. We're going to continue down the runway. Continuing down the runway. Power's idle. Uh, scooter will float a little bit. Now once it touches down, you'll see the spoiler extend light is on. Going to hold the nose up and get a little aero braking done. Once the nose settles, then we're full brakes and full forward on the stick. That gets us nice braking action. And looks like I missed the taxi switch. I did. There we go. Now we can see. Now my recollection is there's a high-speed taxiway here. Or is this golf? Ah, this is golf, so this is right over by my parking. So if I'd have stayed on the binders, I'd have made that. All right, so scooter's kind of tall. You want to be careful with energetic turns. 
So we're going to clear the active and then we'll bring the uh, checklist back up. Alright, so I'm going to shut down here once we're clear the active. There we go. And Eldafra ground, Rattler 00, clear the active, 13 left at golf. Alright, kneeboard. Kneeboard. All right, so we walked through the brake turn. Um, clearly, we missed the uh, taxi light switch there. On downwind, 150, 600 feet. A beam, 135. Touchdown went the way we wanted it. Clear the active. We're going to go. Speed brakes are in. Uh, chaff control. We're going to make sure it's off. Flashlight. Flashlight. We didn't turn him on, did we? Okay, so off, flashlight, flashlight. I like to taxi with the canopy open, so we'll open it up now. So for shutdown, the brakes are set. Taxi light is going to be off. All right, and collision light is going to be off, even though in this current iteration of the airplane, it doesn't uh, function. So nav radar switch is going to go back to standby. Radio altimeter is off. Flaps. Uh, I actually like to leave them down, but we'll pull the flaps up too. Okay, flaps are up. Spoilers are off. Throttle's going to come to the first detent. All right, and second detent also left click. External lights master, we're going to set it off. All other switches go to off. Coming around shouldn't be too many others that we have to worry about. And the lights. And that's it. So at the end of a flight, we have a quick debrief available and uh, also something you're able to use. So that's the current checklist. We'll check you out later. Just go out.